Good morning. How are you folks? You know, welcome to Nightmare Alley. You know, a lot of these cars out here, they, uh, they died of old age. But then there's a lot of them that took their owners through just some kind of a terrible nightmare, tearing them apart, dismembering them. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to, I want to reinforce your move towards wearing a seatbelt because, and, and I want to cover some of the reasons, some of the other reasons that I couldn't cover in Room to Live. But you know, I, I, I want to ask, before we really get started, I want to ask uh, a couple of questions. Okay, now the, uh, the questions come easy. Uh, this first one kind of tough. If you can answer it, I want to see a show of hands. And uh, my first question, how many of you arrived here in an automobile today? Beautiful, beautiful. I figured I'd get everybody. Okay, how about my second question? How many of you, when you got here, had to unbuckle a seatbelt and get out of the car? Now I only got half. Hey, people. Okay, my third question, and this is the one that's really interesting to me. How many of you are going to die in a couple of weeks over Labor Day weekend? You know, it's funny. I never get any hands for that question. It, you know, if I could have the four to 700 people that are going to die Labor Day weekend, if I could have them sitting right here and I ask them that question, that's exactly what they would do. They'd sit there and look at me because, no, it can't be me. And darn it, that's what this is all about. Those people are going to die this coming weekend, and they're not planning on it. They're already buying Christmas presents. I want to make a little uh, correlation here. How many of you have got pants belts on? How many got pants belts on? Why do you wear a belt? Come on, why do you wear a belt? Hold your pants up. There you go. Hold your pants up. No, no, you don't really. You know why you wear your why you wear a belt? Because your mothers and dads taught you to from the time you grew up to put a belt on and str and struggle getting it on. Look at look what you have to do to put that belt on. How many of you ever walked down the road or down the street and ever saw somebody lose their pants? You've never seen anybody lose their pants, but you still put a belt on just as religiously because you got a belt loop. How many of you have ever heard about a fatal accident where somebody got thrown out of a car? You see, we do this, but to pick up a seat belt and go snap, that's too much trouble. You know, really, when you stop and think about that, that's, that's what it is. And, and look at you guys. You got you to gotta do this, girls. You got to get into the snake pit. You know what the snake pit is, don't you? You know, that's that, that's that wad of belts you got up on the cupboard up there, you know, and you dig them out, and you, you got to unsort them, and there's a red one, and you put, ah, you get a blue, no, nah, that don't match, and you, and you monkey around all of that time, and you'll do that, and you're never going to lose your skirt or your slacks, but you get in the car, and you can't buckle up that seatbelt. You know, one of the last accidents that I went to when I was in the department, one of the last ones, I got to draw you a little picture here. This is an open intersection. No stop signs, no nothing. And let's call this gal Mabel. Mabel lived right over here. And her gals, her friends were going to pick, them up, pick her up, two of them. They were going to pick her up, and they were going to go eight blocks across town to play bridge. When I got to that accident scene, there was one car parked right there and another car over here in the ditch. And this car had just a little bit of damage on it, just real minor damage. You know, and when I got there, another trooper came up to police the accident, and, and I looked over there, and I saw two older gals sitting in the, in the car, and, and so I walked over to them, and I said, hey, gals, you all right? And yeah, they said, yeah, we're all right, and the driver was rubbing her forehead here, and she said, but Mabel, what I saw was her rear and her, the back of her legs, because she was hanging out the door. You know, when those gals came over there and picked her up, they started out in this direction, and you know what happened when she got in the car. Her, the driver was looking in the mirror and says, Mabel, you're my partner today. Are we go really going to really beat them today? And they're laughing and having a good time, and they started through this intersection about 15 miles an hour. Now, darn it, that's not much faster than running speed. 15 miles an hour when she went through that intersection, and this guy, because there's no stop signs, he was apparently doing something else, too, and they met right here. Just as simple as that, right there, all of a sudden. What did Mabel do when that impact happened? You know as well as she did what, what you do. She saw the car at the last instant. She began to tighten up her body to try, to try to get away from that car that was going to hit. Just what you do. And when she did this, that's all the, all the, all the time she had, all of a sudden, bang. And, that, and then, she, the, then the impetus from this car hitting here drove her sideways, and she went across the seat 
slammed into this door right here, and wh when she hit that door, the door popped open. And she partially fell out of the car and, and, and down on her hands with, with part of her in and part of her out. And then the impact with the loose gravel on this pavement, that car just continued and went across in here and it went down in that little ditch. Right? Just a depression, no ditch, just a depression. But when the car tipped down in there, the door hooked the bank. And when it hooked the bank, the door slammed shut and crushed Mabel's chest. Do you remember when, when you were a when you were a little kid, how your dad or your brother or somebody held onto your feet and you played wheelbarrow around the living room, you walked around on your hands, boy, and every once in a while your hands would fold up and you'd land on your face. Can you imagine Mabel going across that intersection, sliding on her hands and her face, trying to push herself back in the car? You know, I wonder if I had gone over here and met Mabel when she came out of the house, and if I had said, hey, Mabel, you know, you're, you, better go, you better wear your seatbelt, what's she said? Oh, hey, I'm 65 years old. I don't need a seatbelt on. I've, I've been driving all my life, and I've never had an accident. I don't need it. I'm only going over here eight blocks to play bridge. Just eight blocks? What would be her shoes? Whatever her shoes, she died less than a block, away, block and a half away from home. And, and darn it, people, why talk about that? Because that's the accident where most of these are happening. So many, right around home. You know, you've heard the old saying, 25 miles from home within 25 miles. That's where, that's where all of those are happening. And I get people day after day, hey, Jack, boy, I wear my seatbelt when I'm going on a long trip. I make sure my family's got them on. But around home, it's too much trouble when I'm going to the store. And that's where you die. You know, just, just as simple as that. And you know, after we made room to live, I had so many people say, come up to me and say, hey, Jack, yeah, but what if, what if? And that's what this thing's all about, to cover the what ifs of all of the different kinds. Broadside accidents. You know, this is the one that I really get. Hey, what if we have a broadside accident? People, if you have a broadside accident, let's face it, if you're sitting there in that seat, you've got to take that first impact. You've got to, with or without the seat belt, you've got to take the first one. If you can live through that first impact, you got it made. What you don't have to take is the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth impact. What are they? Well, you know how a, a, a gun works and you pull the trigger and the hammer falls on the bullet and the powder ignites and the bullet is driven away? That's what happens here. All of a sudden, your body goes towards the impact and then it's blown away. And, and, and you go sliding across the car seat, possibly you hit, take the gear shift knob right here, you tear the steering wheel off, you go out through the door, you go sliding across the pavement. Remember about staying in the car? You gotta stay in that car. Let's face it, that broadside accident people, they're bad, you're right there, you're gonna get the impact, but if you live through the first one, hey, you got her made. You know, one day I died in an automobile accident. Hey, I did. I, I'm standing here talking to you and I died, yeah. My partner and I were chasing a car down the expressway and we were going 85 miles an hour. And it was winter time and when we came under the overpass, there was some ice. And my partner reacted to that ice and when he reacted, all of a sudden the car started going sideways and it hit dry pavement. And when it hit dry pavement, you know at 85 miles an hour, clicking them off, what, about 120 feet per second? That car went and went up on its side just like that. I had concrete right here alongside of me because the car was tipped way up. My partner, he was sitting up here, and he was cranking on the steering wheel, trying to make it go in the direction of the skid. You know that rule? And if he hadn't had that seatbelt on, people, when that thing happened, he'd have been sitting over in my lap. Because you can't hang on to that steering wheel and stay in that position when all of a sudden you have that tremendous deceleration. Now, let's face it, a lot of you people aren't from around here, and you don't deal with ice, but how about the wet pavements? How about the time you run off the edge of the road, or you have a blowout? Any number of things that causes that car to start doing this. If you have to spend all your time with your arms holding your rear end onto the seat, how do you drive it? 